loved one, this is me, Ryan. Some of you know me as John Doe, right here in um, Tokyo, Japan. Now, recently the Osaka District Court struck down an attempted injunction to have the OI nuclear reactor shut down by 250-odd-some anti-nuclear activists. Now, the court's ruling was that um, it was not proven that there was a clear and concrete danger presented by maintaining the reactors or keeping them running in at the OI nuclear power plant. Now, I was looking at this case, and I've read a lot of things people have been talking about and about this and all that, and basically what the court did was rule on the absence of law. All right? Now, there's two key points to remember here. Um, two pieces of evidence that um, the plaintiff, in this case, uh, filed was that um, the fault line report that was done on OI reactor and the OI plant not being in line with current nuclear safety standards. Now, that's key they brought that up because uh, new standards, this would be the third time it's been revised, I believe, at this point, come out in July, and that's when Abe plans to go forward to trying to restart reactors if they pass those inspections. So they went by the current ones, right? And um, the court basically ruled on two things, right? Now, the report on the fault lines, okay, it's quite vague. Yes, there is a fault line under the oil reactor. Yes, it's potentially active. But in that report that was released, it was not made very clear or concrete that the, the fault line was not only active, but had a potential to shake up a bit, have an earthquake there. So that was one problem with the case. The second problem with the case is that um, nuclear um, safety standards are actually not in the legal code. Those are policies which are enforced and carried out by the Nuclear Regulatory Agency here in Japan. So it doesn't fall under clear legal code. So they couldn't rule that the plant's not in standards. They could say it's not in standard, but they can't rule that it's a violation of law because you went through the courts. So that's basically the case. That's basically what happened here. It was absence of law, absence of concrete proof. Uh, so this, you know, is a bit depressing, a bit disappointing, but you have to remember here that the anti-nuclear movement kind of shot itself in the foot here, all right, by presenting a case that was not exactly solid, it kind of tips off the uh, pro-nuclear people in the country, especially the government, that they can don't have to worry about being legal legalities being brought against them for trying to restart nuclear reactors. So this kind of closes the door for an option for the anti-nuclear activists, okay? But we want to hear what you think of this, so leave your comments, comment box below.